Okay, today I will show you guys how absurd the strategies of World War I actually were during World War I itself. Here, next to the Harpoon Crater, is the Sunken Road. And a famous photographer named uh, Geoffrey Mallins uh, was here and he filmed British troops here in the sink Sunken Road. And it's a very famous footage of World War I itself. He also captured famous footage of the Harpoon Mine being exploded, also around this location. In June and July of 1916, Mallins was working alongside the men of the 29th Division compiling what was to be his film of the Battle of the Somme. All war photography is risky, but at that time it was all very new and untried. The cameras were very basic, very heavy and still turned by hand. Mallins filmed the 1st Battalion Lancashire here in the sunken road and all those people that you see on the film in the next 24 hours, most of them were dead. The sunken road, or what other people call the sunken lane, was in no man's land on the morning of the 1st of July 1916. Its situation made it too dangerous to hold by either side. Though, the Germans probably held the advantage through their dominance of the higher ground. The Lancashire Fusiliers would have been advancing from the left towards the right. The German positions, called the Bergwerk, was slightly to the right of the small British cemetery on the hillside of which the distance was only around 200 meters. Around 3 a.m. Uh, here on the 1st of July 1916, two companies of Fusiliers went here into the sunken road. The British bombardment was still going on uh, towards the Germans who were on the other side of the field, behind this ridge is a field, uh, to keep the patrols of the Germans away. At 0720 hours, the Hawthorne mine was detonated and of course the British bombardment in the area had to stop because on the far side of the hill, the 2nd Royal Fusilier were rushing the crater. There is even video footage that you see the Fusilier running towards the crater. By now, it was broad daylight and the Germans had already spotted the Lancashire waiting down below them. The German artillery put down a bombardment of their own on the sunken road where the British were sitting. So exactly here where I'm, st where I'm standing right now, the Fusiliers were waiting for the whistle to be blown to go over the top and attack the German positions. At 07.30 hours, otherwise known as zero hour, the Lancashire rose up out of their sunken road, moving towards the German positions on the Bergwerk. They were cut down within a matter of meters. So as you can see, the first layers came from that position and they ran across this field all the way to attack the Germans on that high ground around there. And they were very vulnerable because the Germans had the high ground and they could shoot down into this valley. Because of the early detonation of the mine and the subsequent failure to take the position, the Lancashire were also badly exposed to infilating fire. 
They were being shot at from their sides as well as the front. The remaining companies advancing from the British front line into the sunken road also suffered heavy casualties whilst leaving their own trenches. By lunchtime, the sunken road was simply a point of refuge for the dozens of wounded. These were evacuated during the remainder of the evening and the position was held through the night by just one officer and 25 men. The battalion of Fusiliers had lost 163 who were killed, 312 who were wounded and 11 people who were missing. So this little part of the sum, this small part of the whole battle, really shows the meaningless and absurdity of the strategies which were used in World War I. Because hundreds of men were running from that position to get to that German position there. And they all died here in the middle of the field. And this is just like 200 meters. And it's just so absurd. It's, it's such a tragic loss of life. You can't really describe it with words. It's really tragic. And this really shows what an absurdity World War I really was. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little episode about yeah, the absurdity of World War I. Because usually to get it uh, good in perspective, it's sometimes pretty hard. But this site really shows it well how absurd it really was. Well, I want to thank you guys again for watching. Um, I got my Patreon uh, up. So if you want to support me and my channel, you can do that uh, via Patreon. The link uh, will put in the description. So yeah, again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Salute.